Hello everyone, my name is Pixelrifts and welcome back to the Minecraft Survival Guide. I hope you're all having a good day. In today's episode, I'm back down here at the Beacon Strip Mine where our slime farm has been merrily producing more slime. And now we have that much slime, I'm thinking we need to find some good uses for it. So down here in this big wide open space, <laughs> slime just fell into a hole over there, we are going to start a project that I did on Empire's SMP a little while ago because... I wanted to work a lot with copper, and one of the things I found out quite early on about copper was that it's actually a lot more convenient to work with copper blocks in their finished oxidized form. Naturally, we can leave copper in place and wait for it to oxidize, but when you're testing out builds for the first time and you want to look at a build in its finished form, it kind of takes a while for the copper to get to the state that you want it. And sometimes it can really end up clashing with whatever it is you're trying to build. Or clashes can expose themselves later, which you're not super keen on. Like, for example, here, where obviously the lightning rods don't oxidize, but the oxidized copper blocks do. So one of the things I was thinking about doing was setting up a long-term area where we can oxidize copper and leave it to oxidize in optimal conditions. Usually copper takes a while to oxidize when there are other copper blocks of the same age around, but if it's left four blocks apart, we can actually separate it out and it will oxidize as fast as the game lets it. It's still based on random ticks, so it's still not like within a set time, but usually it will happen a lot faster than if you place a bunch of copper in the same area next to each other. So to do that, you have to spread it out over a wide area. And while of course we could just walk around placing copper every four blocks or so like this and count it out, Doing that gets a little bit tedious, it takes up a fair bit of time, and honestly it doesn't feel like the smartest way to do it. So I decided to challenge myself to build a redstone contraption that was going to space out the copper for me, and so I ended up coming up with a design that I really liked and wanted to reproduce here in the survival guide world. Unfortunately it needs a little bit more headroom than just three blocks, so what I've been doing down here is carving out the ceiling, because of course the haste beacon effect when we have it, when we're within the radius of it, will actually work when you're looking upwards as well, and so I can just strafe left to right along here, taking out all the blocks above me as I go, filling out any dark spaces that pop up, occasionally falling into holes, and I don't have to worry too much about mobs sneaking up on me while while I'm looking directly upwards because this whole area is pretty well lit up to begin with. So with this method I can just carve out the ceiling, I can come back through with a shovel to get rid of all of the dirt, and we can even carve out a bit of the floor if it turns out we're not left with enough space. It looks like we'll have about an additional four blocks to work with there, so seven blocks high might be just about enough. It's also going to get me a ton more cobblestone which I'll need for the redstone components inside of this place, so I'm going to spend a bit more time digging out the ceiling here, and I'll come back when we're ready to start building our new copper aging facility. Okay, it's looking a little bit more spacious in here, a little bit more roomy, we have a little more real estate to work with. In fact, this whole room is a lot wider than I thought I actually needed. But then I figured instead of arranging all of the areas where we load the copper into the flying machines on this side of the room, we're actually going to split it down the middle and we're going to have one set of copper that gets pushed out this way and one set of copper that gets pushed out that way. And we can actually load it all from the centre, recall it all to the centre and store twice as much copper in this room. I feel like that could be kind of a fun idea. So for folks who haven't seen this design before, because I don't expect everybody to have watched other series that I've made, here we're going to set up a redstone circuit which will explain a couple of things about what we're trying to do. We need some repeaters, a couple of redstone torches, some redstone dust, a couple of sticky pistons, and either a honey block or a slime block, doesn't really matter all that much which, we'll also need an observer for this. And I don't have any fully smelted blocks of copper with me right now, so we're going to demonstrate this with a block of raw copper. The idea is that to age the copper four blocks apart, we need to have a series of machines that as we send copper down the room attached to a flying machine like the one we built in yesterday's episode, it's going to grab the copper out from a line of copper attached to the flying machine and it's going to automatically space it four blocks apart like this, where it can do the optimal amount of aging without being affected by any other copper blocks around it. And we'll need to leave a little bit of space for the loading and unloading stations over here, so I think we're going to count from, we'll use the beacon as the center, we're going to count out from here, 13, 14, 15, 16. That should be roughly enough space, I think, because we need to make sure we have room for, I think the maximum capacity it had was 10, 9 or 10, maybe even 11. We want to give it a little bit of headroom before we start the circuit. So 
So I think right here is going to be the first circuit that we set up. First of all, we're going to dig a hole and place a redstone repeater facing this way and set that to two ticks. We're going to leave that in the hole. It's going to be pointing into a block which has a redstone torch on top. We're going to have a piece of redstone dust here. And on top of the redstone repeater, we're going to place a block which is also going to have a redstone torch on it. We're going to have another block there above this redstone torch. And a sticky piston is going to sit on top of this block facing that way. And when it does, it's going to push us off the block there. We're going to use the gap in the piston to hop up and place another piston facing backwards that way. And these both have to be sticky pistons because they're going to be attached to both the block that's coming through the circuit and a honey block or a slime block here that's going to do something kind of interesting once we have the copper block in place. Attached to the redstone torch here, we're going to place an observer facing downwards like so. You can also place a temporary block up here if you want to, but the idea is that when a copper block is pushed over here by a redstone flying machine, it's going to get placed in there and then this sticky piston is going to retract it into this spot. That powers the copper block from below, which powers this piston, extending it and pulling this sticky piston away. This sticky piston becomes disconnected from the redstone torch that was powering it through this block, and that basically allows the copper block to simply sit there isolated by the rest of the circuit. And now whatever happens to this observer, as you'll see, nothing we place up there can affect it. Because even though it channels power through the redstone circuit and deactivates that redstone torch for a second, as you can see right there, it's not affecting the piston above it because the piston has been moved. This allows us to keep the copper here suspended until it has aged a few stages. And there are two separate ways we can handle that. We can either automatically detect when the copper ages through three stages and then eject it from the circuit once it's done aging. Or alternatively, we can take a look down the row of other circuits that we're going to build four blocks apart from this one to check whether or not the remainder of the copper in this row has aged. And then we can recall it all at once. I think we're going to start with that version. I think we'll look for ourselves how much the copper has aged and deactivate all of this stuff manually. In which case, what we need to do is have a series of repeaters connected by redstone wire power the block underneath this redstone torch which can switch it off and it'll pull that copper block out of the circuit. For example here if I power it from this end using a lever or in this case a redstone torch there we go it ejects the copper block back out onto here powers that block and that powers the redstone dust below the observer so that when we remove the block from the observer once again it doesn't activate the circuit and it doesn't try and pull a block back in. So that effectively gives us an eject mechanism that we can apply to all of the circuits down the row until we unpower this redstone line at which point all of the circuits reset and it's ready to receive another block of copper. We put the block of copper in here and it gets pulled into the circuit ready to start aging. Like I said, in future we are going to upgrade this with some circuits which will detect the copper aging, but that's going to take a little bit more redstone engineering and honestly I don't want to set all of that stuff up today. We'll come back to this once we've done a bit more work here, a bit more decorating, and we'll look at the automatic aging detection that we can add to this a little bit later, because having messed with it a little bit and fine-tuned it in a creative test world, I think I've got it nailed so that it fits within a small enough footprint that we can get this working. In the meantime though, we need to count out one, two, three, four blocks, and on the fifth block over, that's where we're going to build the next one of these circuits, so that the copper blocks can have four blocks between them and be aging on every fifth block. Of course, I do want to do something to the aesthetics of this place as well, because if you look around at it, it's a mess. There's bits and pieces of deep slate in the floor everywhere, there's all of these different colours of material, we've got all the decorative stone types, there's dripstone, there's even some copper ore and iron ore lingering in in the ceiling from when we stripped this whole place out and I think we can probably do better than that. So for a start I'm going to go away and I'm going to come back with a few blocks that can isolate the redstone circuits here so that we know if we're redecorating this area we aren't going to remove any blocks that are crucial to the circuits themselves and maybe not in this episode but perhaps in between episodes we can work on the floor around here and make it look a little bit fancier. We can even make sure that the floor here is made out of slabs or some other kind of non-spawnable block therefore eliminating the slime spawning areas in this room and making our slime farm over there even more efficient. But enough waffling, I'm going to go and get some redstone circuitry material together and I'll come back when we're ready to do a little bit more work on the farm here. So a short time later, we have a first row of modules set up. Actually, two rows, I guess, but they're both going to be served by the same flying machine, and that's what we're going to set up over here. But of course, the idea is that each of these modules down the line will claim a block out of a row of blocks being pushed along here until it reaches the end, and by the time it reaches the end, there shouldn't be any blocks left. And the magic number here 
is nine. As I said earlier, I wasn't quite sure how many blocks needed to be attached to the flying machines, and I checked. It seems like they can only push nine blocks at a time. So 18 blocks could be attached to this flying machine, would be pulled out by the circuits around here, and then 18 aged blocks could return. And now naturally, if you multiply that outwards, so we have a bunch of these rows of modules kind of side by side out here, you end up with a whole bunch of blocks being able to age. And in the end, we'll probably be able to age maybe like four stacks worth of copper blocks in this space. It's not going to be too bad. It's definitely going to be worth our while to set this whole thing up. And honestly, I just find it kind of a fun project to do redstone system stuff like this. It's not something I get to do very often in these worlds, and it looks like I do still need to fill in a few of the observers down here to make sure the circuits are complete. I chose honeycomb blocks for the decor because I don't get a chance to use them all that often, and I think they look quite nice next to all of this redstone stuff. I did want to make the floor out of dark oak wood, so dark oak slabs are kind of proving perfect here, and I have a couple of terracotta blocks in mind for some of the accents and the details. And slimes like that actually need a 3x3x2.5 three by three by block high space in which to spawn, so if we put in a couple of other things in here, we might not even need to slab the entire thing at all because there are enough redstone components hanging around to prevent the majority of slime spawns. We just need to make sure that areas like this had something preventing spawns in here, like a, a light source block or a slab or something like that. Anyway, on to the flying machines, and here is where some of this stuff gets a little fun because we're going to pillar up a few blocks here, and we're going to set up our flying machine to carry the copper blocks down to all of these circuits. But before we do that, we will need to find some thing we can use to stop the flying machine once it reaches the other end. And for that we're going to need to use an unpushable block like obsidian, ideally, because once the flying machine has deposited all the copper blocks down this aisle, it's going to be completely empty, and therefore putting a couple of blocks down there isn't going to be enough, it will need to be an unpushable block for the flying machine to come to a complete stop. Incidentally, on Java Edition, the things like chests and furnaces, droppers and dispensers all count as unpushable blocks, simply because they have inventory spaces inside of them. On on Bedrock Edition that doesn't work the same way, but I don't know if a lot of the Redstone System stuff would work on Bedrock Edition, I haven't really tried it, so chances are this might be a tutorial you only want to follow if you're playing in Java. Anyway, down this end is where we're going to be placing a wall of obsidian blocks, and we're going to remove some of these once we figure out exactly how the flying machine is going to come to a stop, but I think it will probably manage to stop around here. Might need to put this one block back or two, but I think it looks okay there. We'll set up a similar thing on the opposite side, and I think this one's going to be about here, because we do still need a little bit of room for the flying machine's copper block arms to be built, so we'll build up here. The minimum you need for a slime block flying machine is two slime blocks, two sticky pistons, and two observers. So we're going to be building something along those lines here. Two sticky pistons facing into each other like that. We're going to put the observers attached to the slime blocks like so, and that's going to work out fine. We will need to trigger this observer to start the flying machine since it triggers the piston that moves the first slime block in that direction. And I have built this thing one block too low because the uh, copper blocks would be removing observers if that was the case. So let's build this one block higher. There we go, that's all in place. And now we need to attach one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine copper blocks to the arms on either side. And we'll need to attach these ones to the slime blocks so they will end there. This one is nine blocks as well. It's just that it starts one block further back because this slime block is slightly displaced. Now, when we activate this observer, it's going to bring both of these rows of copper blocks over the tops of the observers here and each one of these circuits is going to retract a copper block. Let's see that in action by placing a torch on front of that observer and away our machine flies. Ah, looks like we've encountered a problem right away. Oh, this circuit is just burning out because it was missing a redstone torch right there. Okay, so <laughs> let's let's reset this and go for round two. After a brief check of the other circuits down here to make sure none of those are missing components. No, I think we're good. Okay, this time we're going to leave those two copper blocks in here to show that once we push something else over the top of this observer, it's not going to react in any way. The circuit is not going to be broken by additional contact with the observer. So this time we'll just put eight blocks on here and we'll set the flying machine going one more time. And now everything should work as normal. As you can see, of course, the blocks are getting pushed over the observer. So it's triggering the circuit every time, but those pistons get isolated by the 
breaker circuit at the back there so it's not even going to affect it. Each of the blocks gets pulled out at the sides into each of these machines and last but not least the final two copper blocks are removed and that one didn't fire for some reason. Ah, missing redstone dust. Of course, the last one down the line was the one that I didn't check as thoroughly as the others. But there you go, you can place something in there manually as well. And now each of these copper blocks is spaced out optimally and is ready to begin aging. And the reason I wanted to do this with a flying machine is that the flying machine can also be responsible for bringing all of the copper blocks back. And for that, we do need to set up the circuit where each of these individual copper holding cells can be disabled so that we can push them all back out onto the observers and they can be collected in much the same way they were distributed by attaching to the slime blocks on the side of the flying machine. Okay, we're back and now we have blue terracotta, which is purple, but trust me, it's blue terracotta. <laughs> We've got some more of that ready to do some of the other circuits and we have all of our circuits here wired up so that they can be disabled at the flick of a button. Wow, hello. <laughs> the God of Thunder is not happy that I am making all of this fancy redstone. So I think we're going to wire these up in the center here just for this example, but obviously we'll need to put a recovery switch somewhere else. But we want to have a permanent on switch down here so that we can activate all of these circuits until the copper blocks have been retrieved, right? So we need to have this be something like a lever, which is going to look, unfortunately, not very symmetrical because this is an even numbered circuit. Let's see what we can grab. Yep, a simple lever will do it. And now this redstone runs between each of these circuits with just a single repeater in between to make sure that these blocks are receiving strong power and can conduct the redstone dust through them and the redstone dust comes out of this last block here winds up and lands next to this observer once that redstone dust turns on the observer will launch the flying machine again and it will return and collect up all of the copper blocks some of which have even aged a little bit while i've been putting down the redstone lines for this which has not taken very long at all so that just goes to show quite how fast copper can age if you leave it separated out by four blocks like this now it's time to pull the lever and see our first copper harvest come in for test purposes is of course so satisfying watching all of those pistons push the blocks back in and the flying machine is now on its way collecting all of the copper blocks with it as it goes they're attaching to the slime block forming those copper arms on either side and they should slot in either side of the obsidian here ready for the player to retrieve them which if this beacon wasn't here and it was a more formal setup i would be able to do quite easily there we go perfectly they come to a complete stop just past the beacon here so i might actually shuffle a couple of things around here and might even make the center of this whole thing about here that way when the flying machines return with some of the copper from the opposite side we can make sure they meet in the middle without just pushing all of these blocks around and causing chaos now in order to return these circuits to their ready and upright position all we need to do is turn the power off to this that resets all the circuits ready to receive more blocks and the thunder gods get angry at me again <laughs> naturally if i launch the flying machine from here it's going to leave behind all of the copper blocks that aren't attached to the slime blocks so only these two would be left if i do the torch trick up here yeah it only takes two of the copper blocks along with it and the rest of these are just going to be left lingering here but i'm going to work on some ways of automatically retrieving those copper blocks once they pull into the station here maybe we can have them dragged down by pistons or slime blocks and then shuffled off by another flying machine ready to get put in into a single place where we can automatically gather all of it. I feel like stuff like that could be kind of cool, although it's still a long way off. We've got a long ways to go before we can put together something that complex. In the meantime, I'm going to put the rest of these blocks in these circuits manually so that they can continue aging while I work on the next circuits over because we are going to fill up the entire room with these things. But to begin with, I think we'll just do another row of circuits next door and I'll show you the importance of using a combination of slime and honey blocks in this design. So we come now to our second row of circuits and to be honest it's not taken that long to set up already we have some fully oxidized copper waiting for us over here but i have my flying machine set up that's going to go down the road delivering all of the copper and when it does you'll notice that the honey block here from this circuit breaker actually impacts the side of the slime block there it will it will be back to back with the slime block and if those were two slime blocks side by side 
Then one of them would attach to the other. Whichever one retracted first would try and pull the other one back with it. But with honey blocks and slime blocks, as we learned in yesterday's video, they don't attach to each other. Therefore, you can safely build these circuits back to back without any of the components trying to steal each other. I still need to finish off the recall circuit here because unfortunately I ran out of blue terracotta. I need to go and get some more terracotta from a Badlands at some point. But we can at least send this stuff off to age by activating this observer and we'll come up with a more permanent mechanism for that. I think as we work on this in between episodes. But it looks like this one is coming to a stop here with all of the copper blocks deposited in the circuits and I've already got the waiting station ready for it to be sent back down. But I think we're going to wire that up with a little bit more terracotta and then I think we'll probably call it there for this episode because I need to go and get a few more components. We're probably going to be working this on and off on live streams for the next little while in order to get the whole room decorated and finished. It's probably going to take a little bit of time. But at least we can get these two sections all finished up and I need to run off to get some terracotta for that. So uh, I'll be right back. Well, there we go. We have all of our terracotta in place and my inventory is a giant mess right now. All of the shulker boxes that I've been using to move some of this material back to my base are currently unloading back at spawn, so I don't really have anything to put all of this stuff in, much less the stuff that's in my inventory. But we now have a decent amount of these blocks on the left-hand side aged, and for the temporary circuit that we have right here, all of the pistons, all of the circuits on each side of this are now all hooked up to one lever. So I can return both of these flying machines and all of the copper blocks that have been aging here in one movement. We just gotta switch that on. There we go. Still even more satisfying getting all of those blocks moving in unison and the flying machines should return at exactly the same time carrying all the blocks that they bring with them. And here they come now, moving in sync. We have this one over here with a lot more nice looking oxidized blocks on there and this one here with a few fewer, but I did want to test the circuit just to make sure that I'd got everything right, and it looks like I have. Of course, now I can't pick any of these up <laughs> because I have no space in my inventory. Gosh, yeah, I really should have thought this through a little bit better. There we go. Let's throw some of the stone, granite, and diorite and stuff in there, and we've got ourselves some lovely oxidized copper blocks and we can put the remaining ones back on the flying machine to go back into the system. So I'm going to work on filling the room with circuits like this and I think they're going to be a pretty nice way of aging all of this copper. Not to mention the fact that we get to decorate this place a little bit nicer. I do like the fact that we've got these dark oak slabs in here now. I am considering maybe swapping every other one out for spruce. I think it'd be kind of nice to have them alternating wood types like that and we can work on stuff like a ceiling and we'll obviously need to figure out some kind of firing mechanism for all of the different flying machines. But we have made a start here and I hope you guys enjoyed the tutorial for this circuit because I'm actually pretty happy with this. And there are a variety of things that we can do to automate copper stuff in the near future. Not to mention collection, of course. Like I said earlier, we could potentially take all of the copper blocks off the flying machine once they were ready to go and we could have them all stashed in one other place that maybe even exploded with TNT because TNT will drop 100% of the blocks it destroys so we could do some fun stuff collecting things that way. We could also automate the waxing of these copper blocks if we wanted to because dispensers will wax stuff with honeycomb as long as we set up a system to do that. We'll save that for another day but I think that could be a really fun thing to add to the automation here. Now this is by no means the most efficient way to have all of this stuff set up but this was just something I came up with myself and felt like sharing since it was such a big part of my Empire's SMP series and I wanted to rebuild it here in the survival guide. If you're looking for something really heavy duty and very very well engineered you want to check out cubic meter who has a fully automatic oxidized copper factory tutorial elsewhere on youtube here there's some really incredible tutorials for stuff like this there's all been designed kind of in creative and meticulously engineered and refined and compacted until it looks absolutely fascinating and it's not the kind of thing that i would tackle in this series because honestly some of it looks like a nightmare to build in survival and also i'd just be copying somebody else's tutorial but i will give that to you as a recommendation before we sign off for this episode of the minecraft survival guide folks i hope you've enjoyed this episode thank you so much for watching my name has been pixel riffs don't forget to leave a like on this video for me if you enjoyed it subscribe if you want to see more and i'll see you folks soon take care bye for now